Hey everyone, thought I'd just do another video and in this video I would like to touch upon vocal layering. Layering vocals is one of the key elements and techniques used to achieve that rich fullness in a vocal, whether it be a lead vocal or a backing vocal. If we're just stuck with just the one vocal recording, then it can pose to be a challenge when it comes to making it sit properly in the mix as well as sounding nice and full and present. Vocal layering is quite a common technique that's used and it can be achieved in a couple of ways. The first way to achieve this is within the recording process. Usually when we get a vocalist to record, we will record one take and then get them to do another. Depending on how tight and solid the vocalist is, if the second take is on par pretty much with the first take, what can be done is both of those takes can be mixed together and blended in. And since there's a contrast in the performance, that contributes to that rich, chorusy, full-bodied sound of a vocal. Because let's face it, we're human. If we do another take of the first performance, it's not going to be perfectly in pitch, it's not going to be perfectly in time. And that's basically what contributes to the essence of achieving that full bodied sound. Now you could either do double tracking, which is using two vocal layers, or you can quad track them and use four, which is what I like to do because I find it just opens up the sound even more and gives almost that sort of choir effect, if you like. So basically, that one vocalist sounds as though there's four of them in the room, which is quite cool. So for an example, this is a new artificial colors track we're currently working on. So I've just finished um, recording my vocal harmony. So it's a three part harmony and I've recorded each harmony four times. Yes, it certainly was a lot of work, but it's better to take the time during the process, get it sounding right at the source, and then the mix process would just be a lot more easier for you. So I've got my first vocal here, so let's just play that. New city, old city, don't care about me. Now you might pose the question saying, oh, why can't we just duplicate that same one and achieve the same effect? Well, first of all, the vocal will sound a lot louder because you're doubling that same take, but being 100% identical, you're not going to get that contrast because everything is exactly the same. The phase relationship is the same, the pitch is the same, and the rhythm is the same. So you're more or less just making a carbon copy of what you've already done. And just to show you that, I'll just um, duplicate that first one. And then, yeah, we'll have a listen to that exact duplicate with the original recording. New city, old city, don't care about me. So yes, there's a boost in amplitude, but we're not getting that contrast because everything is exactly the same. Whereas after I've recorded that take, I've then recorded exactly the same part, but of course each performance is varied in pitch and rhythm and timing. So if I solo the second take of that, let's have a listen. New city, old city, don't care about me. Now I can hear that sort of chorusy, phasey kind of texture that it's got and Basically, that's what contributes to that rich sound. So ideally, when it comes to mixing that, you want the first take to be slightly louder and then the second one just slightly below it so it blends. So let's have a listen to that now after I've brought up that first take. New city, old city, don't care about me. So you can hear it's just got that slight underlay, but at the same time, it's sounding a lot fuller compared to just using the first vocal. New city, old city, don't care about me. 
Now we'll put the uh, double back in. You city, old city, don't care about me. So there's a huge difference there and it sounds really cool as well. And it gives it a much more engaging character to it. So when you're listening to the recording, you get that full bodiness of the vocal. Now I've used the SM7B, which is a dynamic mic. Funnily enough, the one I'm using right now for those two takes. But another cool thing, if you want even more contrast, is to do each vocal layer, but using a different mic. So I mentioned I did four layers of each harmony. So the other two, I've used my Rode NT2A mic, which has a more brighter and a more present character to it. And plus, being a condenser mic as well, it's going to capture a lot more of the nuances and detail of the voice. Whereas the SN7B tends to have more of a warmer quality to it and full bodiedness. So you can blend the two contrasting mics together to more or less, I guess, EQ that way. So you get the presence of the NT2A mic and then the warmth and the full bodiedness of the Shure SM7B. So if we engage the NT2A mics. Now let's have a listen. You city, old city, don't care about me. So that's given it a lot more spice and the vocals are sounding a lot more present, but at the same time, you still got that warmth from the SM7B. And just to do a little bit of a shootout, this is what the SM7B mic on its own sounds like. New city, old city, don't care about me. So you can hear it's got that warmth, full body quality to it. And if we go to the NT2A. New city, old city, don't care about me. So you can hear the NT2A has got a lot more presence to it, a lot more airiness to the vocal, which is great. And then when you combine the two, this is the result. New city, old city, don't care about me. So even just engaging just each of the two mics, you get a picture of how those two contrasts can really, you know, elevate the vocal to next level. And there's another way to also achieve this. There's various vocal doubling plugins you can get which can achieve a similar effect. But at the same time, since it's a plugin, you're going to get a slightly different result. Whereas if you record it on the spot, just like this, then being a performance, you're going to get a, a fine, you're going to get a much better result out of it. So for an example, if I go to the isotope one, Isotope to a vocal doubler, and it's actually free as well, so take advantage of that. So let's just play the first track. New city, old city, don't care about me. People dancing by the traffic lights and everyone drinking bubble tea. So you can hear how it's managed to achieve a similar result, but at the same time, me personally, I find it sort of sounds a bit mechanical. Whereas um, if you've got a vocalist who's not confident at doing that, then it's definitely a great substitute to have. Or another method, which I've actually done on Nathan's lead vocals, because he only just gave me just the one vocal take for this track. So what I've done, I've duplicated them four times here. So if we just play the first one. New city, old city, don't care about me. So that's got nothing on there, but what I've done to achieve a similar character is if we go to the second take of Nathan's voice, or the second duplicate of that matter. You can just put up a pitch shifter plugin and then adjust the sense, like I've adjusted it, um, 10 cents. 
plus. So that will kind of alter the pitch and move the pitch up just by little increments. And that can be enough just to get that nice contrast and fluctuation and pitch on that duplicate. So then by combining it with the first one, this is how it would sound. New city, old city, don't care about me. So if we just mute that and just play the first one. New city, old city, don't care about me. And put the duplicate back on with the pitch shifter. New city, old city, don't care about me. And then if we go to the third duplicate, still got the same pitch shifter plugin, but then I've adjusted it minus 10 cents, which is going to alter the pitch lower than that. So if we combine that. New city, old city, don't care about me. So that's made it sound even more larger than life. And then the fourth one. Still got the pitch shifter on, but then I've raised that by plus 15. So I kind of brought the pitch up on that a little bit higher. So we combine all four. New city, old city, don't care about me. So again, that's even more, you know, upfront than what it is. So that's basically another approach you can do if you only just got the one vocal track or if your vocalist um, isn't confident at doing the double tracking but as you can see like the sounds a lot more mechanical I find whereas doing it with the recording process just gives a much more kind of natural character and a bit more oomph because every performance is different.